It's now more important than ever to take the time for self-care so we can stay happy, calm, and sane in this crazy world. And you might really want to pick up a new hobby and you decided on trying out watercolor painting so you can relax and unwind after a long day of work. And you might even have all the good brushes, paint, and the best paper, but you feel overwhelmed. You might feel intimidated because you've never tried it before and you don't really know where to start, what techniques to experiment with first, what to paint, and so on. And because I want you to just pick up your supplies and start painting so you don't head toward burnout, let me help you by showing you some of the essential watercolor skills you want to focus on right from the beginning. And even if you have painted for a while, these are great reminders that will keep you on track. First, you want to become the master of your supplies, not the victim by knowing what to look for in good quality watercolor supplies. Even if you think you're just starting out, having good quality supplies will make it so much easier for you to learn and to actually have fun painting. Because some techniques might not even work with poor quality supplies. For example, if your paper breaks, your paint is chalky and your brushes can't even hold their shape, you might not be able to blend your colors beautifully, refine your artwork and use different watercolor techniques that in the end you might end up feeling frustrated and want to give up. So for example, you want to learn about different materials the paper can be made of, what's the difference between their surface and weight. You also want to start looking at the labels of your watercolor paints because you do want to know what's inside and what to expect from the paint. For example, if the paint is staining, so you're not surprised that your brushes stay blue after you've cleaned them or that you can't really remove the wet paint from your paper that easily. The more you know, the more you can be in control of your supplies and the results. The same goes for the brushes. Different materials and shapes, for example, can make a huge difference in your learning and painting experience. For example, if you try to use brushes for acrylic paint, you won't be able to get the same smooth color blending that you could get with a good brush made especially for watercolors. Because after all, they're both different types of medium. Next, you want to learn how to use your brush effectively. I get a lot of questions about what brushes I'm using and what you, you, what you should get. I personally always focus on quality over quantity because I'd rather invest a little more into one or two brushes that I can use for a lot of different things than getting 10 different brushes that were cheap but I can barely use or are a nightmare to paint with. Because with one single good brush, for example, you can paint thin and thick lines and cover a larger area of paper with paint or water because the bristles can hold a lot more water and paint. From there, I also like to use a flat brush from time to time to cover one big area with paint or water as evenly as possible. I know it can be shocking to see a brush for $10 in an art store when you're used to seeing one or two dollars brushes in a craft store, but you can think of that as an investment. It's like shopping for clothes, basically. Instead of constantly buying super cheap items that tend to look worn out, lose colors, and get holes after three times of washing, you could invest the same amount of money into one or two amazing and high quality pieces that last you for years. Next to knowing how to identify good quality of your supplies and how to use your brushes, it's also important to know how to adjust your water to paint ratio. Because there are different stages of consistency depending on how much or how little paint or water you're using. Especially when you have a background, for example, in acrylic or oil painting, it can be really tempting to start with very dark colors and then trying to layer brighter colors on top. With watercolors, it's not really possible because it's actually a transparent medium. That's why you want to really get to know your paint first to see how it looks and feels on your brush and on the paper when you use lots or little water or paint. 
knowing how to control the water to paint ratio will also help you create your painting a layer by layer. As I said earlier, if you're used to using oils or acrylics, you might start with colors that are way too dark that later when you want to add highlights, it won't be possible without any additional opaque paint, for example, because watercolors is a transparent medium. So with watercolors, you want to get familiar with the water to paint ratio first and with building your painting from a light to dark. And when you get a feeling for how much or how little paint or water you need to get the light or dark versions of your colors, you want to get familiar with layering your paint. Here you want to pay attention to how much paint and water there is on your brush, whether or not your paper is dry enough and how gentle you go over the previous layer of paint with your brush. As I said earlier, I always go for quality over quantity. The same goes for colors and mixing them. I know it's very tempting to buy a cheap watercolor set with 50 different colors because it seems like you're getting a good deal, but in the end, you might end up being really unhappy with how chalky, pale, and muddy your colors look. Instead, I always encourage beginners to invest into a good watercolor set that has only a few key colors because you can actually mix a variety of different colors with those. To be able to know how to mix certain colors, it's super important to really take the time to get to know them. You might notice that most watercolor starter sets within the beginner and professional range come with certain color combinations. You have different types of yellows, reds, and blues, for example, and they are there for a reason. Because depending on what yellow, red, and blue you mix together, you get either vibrant colors or a slightly muted version. Meaning instead of a super vibrant purple or green, you can mix a more natural and a less vibrant color. And sometimes you do want to achieve that and sometimes you want to avoid that. And getting to know your colors is the first step to being in control over your color mixture and the results. Knowing your colors is especially important when you want to blend your colors. If you blend the wrong red and blue, you will get a muddier version of purple in between those two. But you also want to pay attention to the different amounts of water on your paper and on your brush depending on how much or how little water there is on the paper and on your brush, your paint can spread out a lot, just a little bit or not at all. The same goes when you blend colors on top of each other. If you apply wet paint to an area that it has already started drying, you might end up creating backgrounds, also known as the cauliflower effect. So start paying close attention to the different amount of water and paint both on paper and brush and onto the different drying stages during your painting process. You also want to be aware of the fact that watercolor painting is as much about taking color off as putting it on. Meaning, even if you apply paint to the paper and you're not happy with it and you want to fix it, you can simply use a tissue paper or towel to lift off some of the wet paint. But you can also use this technique to add certain details to your painting, for example, the moon or sun, light rays, or any other textures you might need in your painting. This is the great part about watercolor painting because you can usually lift it off very easily and readjust your painting until you're happy with the result. So don't panic if something doesn't go according to your plan immediately. As you can see, watercolor painting is a medium that is not this mysterious medium that only the chosen ones are able to use. It's actually just like everything else. It comes with its own set of rules and techniques that you can master over time if you take the time to explore and practice them. If you want to learn more about how to get started with watercolor painting and also want some additional painting ideas to practice those techniques, you can check out my new watercolor book that is all about that. You can find a link in the description box down below. I really hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.